Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, the periodic table and the way that it kind of works. And so at this point, you should be, um, oh, where is my periodic table? Um, let's see, there it is. Um, you should be seeing that you have those Roman numerals written on the top. So if you don't, you should have a Roman numeral 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and eight, and then along the side you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just written with regular numbers. Okay, so um, we are going to talk now about what's called the octet rule. So oct means the number eight, right? And what's going to happen is all of these guys are going to be trying to get eight electrons in their outermost shell. So some of them are going to take electrons to do that. Some of them are going to give away electrons to do that. And other ones have eight, and so they're not going to do anything. Um, they can share electrons. There's all sorts of different things that they can do. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is talk about the way that this is all set up. So let me get my little um, bamboo dock here. Okay, so I'm going to clear this. This is stuff you'll see later. Okay, so um, let's talk about the um, orbital shell. So basically the way it works is the innermost orbital can have a maximum of two electrons in it. Then the next one can have a maximum of eight, and then the next one eight, and so on, and so on. Okay, so that's going to be the um, configuration that's going to happen. Now, let's take a look at our periodic table and let's talk about sodium. So sodium, if you look at its atomic number, has 11 electrons in, um, in the atom. So going back to our Google Doc thing, what we're going to do is, oh, where's my pen? Okay, so it, we said that sodium has 11 electrons, as you can see. So it's going to have two here. Now that shell is full, right? So now the next ones are going to spill out into the next orbital, which can hold a maximum of eight. And then there's going to be one more that's going to be in that final one, right? So we can say that sodium has one electron in its outermost shell. Now, um, we're going to talk a little bit later about whether sodium is really going to think that that's a good idea or whether um, it's going to give one away so it'll have eight in its outermost shell. So that's going to come up a little bit later. Um, now, let's look at something like lithium right above it. Lithium has three electrons. So if we were doing its configuration, Li for lithium, um, we are going to have two and then we're going to have one. Right? That's how it's going to be set up. So one thing I want you to notice is lithium has one in its outermost shell. So, oh my god, this is amazing. Check this out. So, oops, the mouse is going crazy. So lithium had one in its outermost shell. Sodium had one in its outermost shell. And they're both in the same column. And if you look at the number at the top of the column, it's one. I know, I'm blowing your minds, right? So everything in this column is going to have one electron in its outermost shell. In this column, everything in this one is going to have two in its outermost shell, and so on and so on. The other thing I want you to notice is lithium here has two circles called orbitals, right? And if you look, the row that it's in is going to be two, right? Now sodium, if you remember, had two, then eight, then one, right? And so it had three orbitals, and if you look, it's in row three, okay? So that's the way the periodic table is set up. It's not an accident. All right, now um, what's going to happen is everything in that periodic table is going to react with something else in some way, shape, or form to get eight electrons in their outermost shell giving them away, taking them, sharing them, whatever the case may be. However, if we look at this group over here, they have a number eight on the top of their column, and that's because they have eight in their outermost shell, right? If we look at neon, neon has 10 total electrons, so that would be two and then eight. So what's going to happen with these guys is they're going to not need to react with anything because their octet rule is complete. So we call them the noble gases, and I call them the snobs of the periodic table because they don't want to react with anything. They're called unreactive, and that's because they don't need to. They have their octet rule fulfilled. Okay, going back to the notes, um, there's our noble gases, and then there's our reactive atoms. All right, 
So um, now we're going to talk a little bit about bonding in the next couple of videos. And the whole point of bonding is to make molecules and compounds. Now, um, a molecule is going to be a group of atoms that are held together. It can be the same type of atom or it can be different types of atoms. A compound has to be two or more different types of atoms. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more in class, but there's definitely that difference there. So chemical bonding, like I said, is going to happen to make things become stable and fulfill their octet rule. So in the next video, we're going to start talking about ionic bonds and how ionic bonds actually work.